motion to amend the executive order. So Tonight we're here to uh, recognize the hard work of uh, Edward Vandenberg and other people that have helped him, but basically his work. And I uh, would like to read this proclamation. Whereas for more than 12 years, Edward Vandenberg, together with his son, Daniel, have cared for an ancient cemetery, guess to be at least 240 years old and perhaps several decades older. And whereas the cemetery, which is known by several names, including Pap Kenny, did I say that correct? Pap Caton. Pap Caton, or Decker Town Union Cemetery, and whereas located along Route 23 and Cemetery Road in Wantage Township, in years gone by, the former staged road known as Hamburg Patterson Turnpike traveled by this cemetery, and whereas father and son team had work, <coughs> had their work cut out for them to remove brush, lay millings over the mud roads that weave through the cemetery and regrade and seed to establish new lawns. And whereas <coughs> it was soon recognized the need for income of maintenance was to continue, so their survey friend, Eric Smart, volunteered and surveyed the areas for new plots for 1,000 400 new burial sites and 500 cremation sites. So outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding power. Whereas, <coughs> as sites and whereas, the work continued with cooperation of local Boy Scout troop and Kiwanis Club to establish a veterans memorial funded by an anonymous benefactor. And whereas the cemetery remains active, the history is rich for those laid to rest, including six Revolutionary War veterans as well as Civil War and veterans of more recent wars. Now therefore it be, it be resolved that the chosen free, uh, the Sussex County Board of Chosen Freeholders proclaim their appreciation for Edward and Daniel Vandenberg's selfless, kindless acts they bestowed to the sacred site and also to the many volunteers they recruited to restore and preserve the Decker Town Union Library by order and cemetery. I, I do need that. I do need the help. People will tell you I do need the help. I should have studied much better when I was in school. Uh, by order of the Board of Chosen Freeholders, Herb Yardley, Freeholder Director, Sylvia Patillo, Deputy Director, Dawn Fantasia, Freeholder, Joshua Hertzberg, Freeholder, and George Graham, Freeholder. Thank you for the work you've done. Thank you. I appreciate that. Would you step up from behind? Oh, from behind the front. Let's go in the front here. Come on. You want the plaque this way or handing it? Sure. Yes. 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 
tickets or the floor in here. Before we get to the certificate of recognition, I just want to thank you for Senior Olympic Day today. Yeah, uh, held in the Pentagon. Uh, Sparta came in first. Mm -hmm. Yay, Sparta. Be proud of your seniors. They work really hard. <laughs> Not only did we have this wonderful Senior Olympic, but the band came out, the high school band came out and played this, the Olympic music, you know, to get them ready. They had the torch and the march. I mean, this is a very competitive day for them. They practice for it. They get all riled up for it. Um, so we had Sparta took first place. We had the YMCA and Hardison took second. And Pagan took third. And Hardison brought a ringer with them this time. Senator Oroho, who was dragged there by his wife, Rita. Uh, but he did a great job. And everybody had a good time. Everybody had a really great time. And next time we are some kind of... I forgot. I, I covered my <laughs> son in sunscreen and not myself. <laughs> so it was really a great day, and they get so excited about this. And you know, you think they wouldn't be that competitive, but they can get very competitive, especially in the chicken fling. Chicken toss. Yeah, yeah. You know, chicken toss is really tough. Um, it really is hard because I watched the wind take the chicken. It's a rubber chicken. Sylvia, <laughs> 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 I think you have a phone call. No, just well, just you it's a long chicken and it's it's a wobbly thing and then when you flip it it's not balanced so it's all over the place and then when the wind takes it you just see it go so it was very frustrating but you did a phenomenal job of it, it was a great team effort from it everybody fun. it was fun but anyway tonight the board of chosen freeholders has a certificate of recognition for the rain hands uh, for her commendable record of service leadership and praiseworthy involvement with older americans month um, Lorraine does so many different events, whether it's veterans or older Americans or with the seniors, and every one that you do is great, it's well organized, and it's always successful. Um, older Americans Month is one of my favorites. It's held up at Selective. There's all the vendors that are there for all the information about senior services that they offer out of their own private businesses. You have our senior services group is there. You have programs for them to have a really good time. Last year I went into the Color a Rock mm -hmm. program and learned how to color my rock. And then you have um, a beautiful lunch prepared for them. And they get to have fellowship. And that's the most important thing with seniors, is you want them to have fellowship. You want them to have an interest in something. You want them to meet other seniors you know, and have a conversation. So they, they have that feeling of uh, community around them all the time. And it's always a big success. And you do a wonderful job with that, as with everything else. So I can never thank you enough, because you give so much of yourself. And, and they love the rain. They just love her, because it's done through the heart by the heart and, and with her heart. Yeah, and that makes crying. a difference. So <laughs> that's what you deserve it. You deserve the recognition. And this um, recognition certificate is through the uh, Freeholder Board, which is Herbert Garvey, Freeholder Director, Sylvia Vitello, Deputy. You have Freeholder Dawn Fantasia, Joshua Hertzberg, and George Graham. And we thank you for all the seniors. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Tomato <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. And the next one we have is the Sussex County Technical School Culinary Arts Program, recognizing <coughs> recognition for the two gold medals at the New Jersey Association of Counties Conference. <laughs> Uh, wow, I thought one young can say join, you can't. Come on, talk to us. Come on, guys, come on up. Chef, you want to introduce your team here? Yes, it's our team. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> We got Luther Menzi, Menzi, Menzel, <laughs> Brennan Gamutin, Molly Taylor, Laura Mangino, and Juliana Catalino. And I'm myself, Neil Tripper, and then uh, Gus was a part of it too. And uh, we were at the inject competition uh, in May 10th, I think. We had, uh, I was there. Chef Kazork, who couldn't be here tonight, and also uh, Mr. Howard Drake, our carpentry teacher. He was uh, a key component to this build Absolutely. of our uh, farm stand this year. So how much going on? We built the building. And, and his students are students. Howard's carpentry uh, program does a lot for our school, along with the culinary. We're very proud of 
uh, both programs. And thank the freeholders to see me for your recognition of our students. Uh, it's, it's our pleasure. And you know, we were lucky enough since it was the, the freeholder convention, we were all down there. And I, I remember I went in early, everybody was getting set up, and I remember seeing the building in the back. And I was thinking, oh man, they're going to get all, everyone's going to want to go there. It's such a nice looking building. And I, as I walked back, it was ours. <laughs> I said, wow, that's us. It, it looked amazing. I mean, it stood out amongst all the other counties. It really did. And that's the first thing you saw. But it wasn't what you were there for. And then you tasted the food. And uh, I just, I was watching you guys work. I remember how much work it looked like I had to bring you guys all water because it was like a sauna in there. And I couldn't believe uh, the, the, the intricacies of what you guys were working on. And, you know, I, I think by far you had the most technical dish that was there. Um, and, and I'm going to read a little bit about it. Let's see what it was. It was braised stuffed Easter quail relayed with a wild rice cake on port wine reduction. I kept, well, I kept leaving and coming back. Are they done now? I kept leaving and coming back. I mean, truly, I was so impressed with what you guys did. Um, I, I thought it was going to be a clean sweep, but I guess I'm a little biased. Um, but all the counties did a great job. You guys definitely stood out. I, I was I was proud to be there. I was I was definitely proud to, to represent Sussex County that day because of the work you guys did. And I know I, I speak for all the freeholders. We were all talking about it. And it's a crazy event. You walk in and there's 350 people are there to, to actually taste and grade the food. And it is a mad dash to go from one place to another and you're trying to, to keep up. But um, you guys stood out the whole time. So on behalf of the Freeholder Board, two gold medals in the New Jersey Association of Counties Cook-Off, Chef's Judges Award for the food presentation, and the NJAC Judges Award for station display. And like I said, I mean, it stood out the minute you walked in. Um, proud of you guys. Thank you for representing Census County so well. On behalf of our Freeholder Director, Herb Yardley, Deputy Freeholder Director, Sylvia Patillo, and Freeholders, Don Fantasia, Josh Hertzberg, and George Graham. Great job, guys. Thank you. Can we get pictures? Can we get out from behind them? Oh, always in the way. Oh, we shut down here. No. I'm lower to you. You gotta be chef. You gotta bring it up and down, right? Are we ready? Thank you. Just a comment, if I could. Uh, it is amazing to see how this works because um, the, prop, the building you're in was made by the uh, uh, Mr. Drake's uh, Howard um, Drake's program. Right. So um, I, I happened to uh, I'm a liaison. So I happened to go through the building that day when you guys were working on that, and it was amazing to have this big building that they have to put up. But his guys in his apartment aren't there. <laughs> so they have to build that um, large uh, house, basically mini house or mini structure, uh, so that the chefs and the cooks can all put that together. And uh, you did a great yeah. job. As long as you say something about Already. my kids. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm, I could talk about my kids all night. Um, when they came to us with the concept of, of that, um, it was a little scratch piece of paper that Quite frankly, we didn't understand. <laughs> so we had to ask, what, what exactly is this? And then my district's the next level. They said, all right, we understand the concept. We really want to represent our county. They hit the, the, the nail right on the head with saying, let's make this fruit stand structure. But then my kids said, well, let's go to the next level. Let's make this reclaimed. So that entire structure was built, designed, built, and manufactured out of all reclaimed material. Wow in such a way to make it modular so it fit in a school bus to make that trek to Atlantic City to be installed. All my chefs that don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know. And they did a fabulous job with, with what we created. And you know, it it's you know, it's their reason why we were as, as successful as we are. And that's one of the dynamics about our school that makes our county school the, the best of the best in New Jersey. So we appreciate it. Very good. Good job. <laughs> Please also thank your kids for us. <laughs> and do we have Sussex County 2019 Educational Support Professional Kim Walsh? 
Is Kim Walsh here? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, hi, Kim. Hi. So Kim was unable to join us at our last meeting because we had our Wizard of Oz moment, yes, right? Yes, we did. The building was going to blow away, so it, was, it wasn't great weather. But um, tonight we're honoring uh, Kim Walsh as the Sussex County 2019 Educational uh, Support Professional of the Year. Um, an educational services professional, a lot of times they'll work with students one-on-one. -on -one. They work with students perhaps with IEPs, 504 plans, behavior plans, and they help implement those, um, you know, what's required for individual students or small groups of students, sometimes whole class. But they are such an integral part of an education team in order to make sure that students, especially students with special needs, get everything that they, um, they deserve in an inclusive environment. So I have a little bio on you, a little bit to share. Um, Ms. Walsh has been a paraprofessional in Sussex Wantage for over 23 years. She works with some of the most challenging students and always with a smile on her face. She's able to connect with each student, is flexible and understanding and devoted to make sure each one has a successful school year. With an incredible work ethic, Ms. Walsh learned sign language to better communicate with some of her students. She is a self-driven, she has a self-driven attitude and a high level of integrity. For over 12 years, she has co-chaired the Pride Committee in the school district. She is always looking for ways to show her association in the brightest ways to the community. She received numerous letters of recommendations for this honor. One letter stated, quote, that she is a wealth of knowledge and someone who believes in her students, which helped them rise to the occasion and believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. So I know you were honored at your dinner, I believe, in May. Yes but the Board of Freeholders would like to present the Certificate of Recognition to you to congratulate you to be selected Sussex County 2019 Educational Support Professional of the Year. Uh, Herbert Yardley, Freeholder Director, Sylvia Patillo, Deputy Freeholder Director, John Fantasia, Joshua Hertzberg, and George Graham Freeholders. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Educational support professionals are comprised of primarily uh, custodians, bus drivers, secretaries, sometimes security guards, sometimes cafeteria workers, and teacher assistant slash power professional, which is who, which which is what my title is. Those of us that, do, that go into this profession never go into it for the recognition. We go into it for the good of children, because we know we make a difference in our students and our children's lives we in turn make a huge difference in our communities. But when we are recognized, thank you so much, it is such an honor to know that what we do each and every day has not gone unnoticed, so thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, Mr. Gettler. We'll see. We'll see you at the board meeting next week. Right? Uh, right? Uh, on its board meeting? The 26th? The 26th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sure they will greatly appreciate being able to leave. It's a full house. We want to just stage right Um we try to condense, I was advised, to two or three minutes today, something that takes about a thousand hours to do. Uh, half a dozen of staff and, and a couple people and a few partners to finish the audit. Um, the process was completed. There's, most of you received the call. Not that I don't want to be includes all the financial statements. It includes the financial statements and a compliance section. Um, most of the news, almost all the news was good this year. Your fund balance <clears throat> increased about 450,000. You went from 15.9 million to 16.35 million. A nice increase of 450,000. While there were many ups and downs all through uh, the year, you mostly operated uh, within the budget plan. Um, the best news was that interest on investment increased significantly from the previous year and we collected $679,000 on interest on investment, which was $450,000 more than what you budgeted. So that really accounted for almost all of the increase. Again, there were a lot of small ups and downs, but in your budget planning, generally you don't anticipate too high or too low or over budget or under budget and it tends to work out over the course of the year. Um, in the trust fund things basically operated as they usually do. You started the year with 4.3 million in open space. You ended the year with the same amount. The planning items such as accumulated sick uh, started at 2.2, went up about 50,000 in storm recovery. You increased that reserve from 1.6 to 2.2. I think it's important to recognize those other reserves because they show that you're properly planning. And I do want to spend a minute or two at the end talking about <coughs> your bond sale and the, um, the rating agency review. The capital fund, your debt, uh, overall debt authorized was down from 94 million at the end of last year to 91 million at the end of this year. That does not include the solar debt. I know everyone wants you to include that in your debt. That's not debt issued by the county. That's issued by the Western Improvement Authority. You have the uh, Sussex County MUA also has their own debt. We don't include that. Uh, the library fund operated pretty much on balance. It started the year with 712000 and ended with 676000 uh, Then there's the whole compliance section of the report. Um, you do have a new CFO who is a CPA and comes with a great deal of experience. Um, you've had Good experience, you've had a CPA in the past that does count when you get to the rating agency, review, et cetera, but it also counts in your own report. You had three minor items. One had to do with segregation of duties. One had to do with POs being uh, dated uh, after the, uh, the PO being dated, yeah, after the purchase was already made. And then there was one comment uh, relative to a grant. All relatively minor stuff, two or three minutes. I think I did it. What I did want to spend a few minutes on was um, you had a successful bond sale and you went through the rating agency process. And to me, and I think for your administration and for your uh, finance department, it's really a big deal because you get compared to counties all across the uh, country. And while little things to you or to the public, such as moving from standard to good, doesn't sound like a big move to guys like us and him, you know, having being upgraded a little bit in where uh, the rating agency feels you stand relative to all other counties, you know, it doesn't get better than that. So that happened. You did maintain your AA rating on a 
$27 million bond sale and a $14 million bond anticipation notes. Um, they recognized some things specifically, um, which I thought was important. They recognized the strong policies that you put into place in 2018. A fund balance policy was put in place and uh, we were able to get some credit for the debt service policy, which is in process and probably uh, going to be completed shortly. They talk about a very strong economy, strong management, good financial policies and practices. They have a grid that they mark all counties and Sussex County rated very high. They cited strong budgetary performance with operating sur uh, surpluses um, and strong budget flexibility, strong liquidity. Um, they also, again, talked about a positive future for Sussex County, both in the near term and the long term, and they did upgrade the um, uh, the policies and practices under their standard grid from standard to good. I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but it doesn't get any better than that for your mm -hmm. finance department. Well, congratulations. I think that's a job well done. Mm -hmm. and, and that does that does relate to cost savings. Yeah, I, yeah. So I think That's, it is important. Of course. Uh, I did want to add that, that uh, one of the statements they make is that there's a very minor difference between your rating of AA plus and AAA. Um, your AA plus, the reason you're probably not at a AAA is because of your infrastructure and your ability to track your ratings. Uh, everything else you're rated top notch, but you're not going to get to that AAA until you can show, like Morris County has, that you have unlimited access to new building construction taxpayers that are going to pay your taxes. So when you get compared uh, countrywide and you get your AA rating with some slight improvements, it does relate to savings in your uh, long term rate on the $27 million bonds and your short term. I have a question. That's what I was wondering. Okay. If there were any questions? Um, when you said there were, you know, the, the minor, uh, you know, suggestions or mediations, it, it seems to be a trend even with municipalities. I recall being in Franklin, and, and each year uh, they discuss segregation of duties for specific things. Was always a recommendation, um, you know, and PO dated after the actual purchase when there was an emergent situation. I mean, these are normal. I mean, I've never seen one come back that didn't right. include that language, so I just want to make sure that we are not, you know, deviating away from what we should be doing or what your recommendation would be to help with that segregation of duties piece or the PO piece. Uh, yeah, uh, specifically as it relates to those two, I think you have a very strong system. It, the accounting standards tell us that we need to advise you, the freeholders, that unless your internal control process and your segregation duties is absolutely impeccable, where you have many people who are all doing different functions independent of each other, then we need to include and identify a key. You. you do have a very strong system, you just don't have enough employees, and I'm not recommending that you hire more employees. It just means that you, the freeholders, need to be aware of what's going on, and I think if I asked any of you about the budget, the reports, the monthly reports you get, I know you review them all, that's a mitigating uh, circumstance. So that's what we're looking for. But we still have to tell you that your system is less than perfect, although very good. Based upon As the it size. relates to POs, um, you know, life happens. It's a big operation. You, have, you deal with thousands of purchase orders a year. Um, I want to say, relate to this we're particularly high graders if we find something that's not exactly the way it should be it goes in the report in almost every circumstance by the next year it's either improved or been corrected historically in Sussex County so uh, as it relates to the overall big, bigger picture of the types of comments and recommendations and what this means um, they're relatively minor I don't want to call them just housekeeping kind of things but a kind of typical of a well-run community with experienced staff and people. Um, 
getting the, those minimum recommendations. Nobody is excited as Alka and I about the upgrade from the We're having on the inside. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to say thank you to, to you. I want to say thank you to Elka. Thank you for, for coming here and to be our CFO. But uh, thank you for all the years that you put into this place. And thank you for jumping on the table a couple of times and saying, <laughs> you can do that with all my dead body. so long ago that not everybody believes it's true. I just heard that story today. It's a true story. story. It's a true story. He, he, he's not that tall, but he can jump on the table. <laughs> and and that you. has been called. <clears throat> many things um, by members of the public um, because people come in and want things that we can't give them and uh, Ray has gotten blamed for some of that. Well, and, you know, so that's interesting because I do sit here through those meetings, um, you know, and it always happens through the budgetary process and you get criticized for making decisions like anybody who makes decisions, you get criticized for making decisions. And then this is the next phase where your audit gets done and at the same time you're issuing bonds and get uh, your credit rating reviewed and evaluated and you get compared to counties all across the country. So uh, while not as entertaining and exciting as it is to be critical of you, it's nice that in this next phase there are reasons that you're making those quality decisions and doing the planning and your financial mm -hmm. statements are sound and it's mm -hmm. recognized by not just people in Sussex County but rating agencies that look at every county mm -hmm. across And you kept your eye on that even when we're in the, the dark days of the coming out of the recession. You, um, you, your, yes. your advice in those days were not much different than they are today. We were in relatively better times and growth period, but you still are keeping us on a cautionary way towards making sure that we're prepared, like you said, having the reserves for uh, for uh, <laughs> for bad things. And you've been there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Alfred. Okay. This, this is the audit application. Can we find signing? Okay, resolution, certification, <coughs> certification of the review of the audit by group affidavit, uh, Dave, affidavit. Well, David. Sir, David. Sir, <laughs> David. Motion to adopt the resolution. So Second. Okay, roll call. Freeholder Fantasia? Yes. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Hertzberg? Yes. Freeholder Catillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Yard? Yes. Thank you for signing. I have to hunt you down after the meeting. Okay. Um, public hearings? We have none. Public session from the floor. Um, before we do anything with that, would you like to read something? Something, something to read here? Um, I want to address the public and <clears throat> say I'd like to address comments made by a member of the public at the last board meeting, allegations made about cooking the books, corruption, theft, etc. are false. A review of the 2018 abstract of rateable show that column I and I2 concerning the county, county library tax should not have been published, but that column uh, A3 is correct is the correct amount to be leveled for the county library tax. Further allegations concerning the tax overbilling in, 2000, in 2014 is well documented, was reviewed by the State Division of Local Government Services, and <clears throat> resolved in the was resolved in the uh, year 2015, 2015 fiscal year. This issue was determined to be appropriately handled and properly reflected in the financial statements approved by the Division of Local Government Services, and the allegations to the contrary are simply not true. Okay, um, public session from the floor. Comments are limited to five minutes or less and must only address issues regarding agenda items. Please state your name and print your name and municipality on the <coughs> sheet. Um, motion. motion to open the um, huh? so motion. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Anyone wish to address the freeholder board?
her, yes. her response to my presentation is totally fictitious. It's total whitewash. It's total lies. You have $582,696 of our money. We want it back. You have the opportunity. You have the opportunity to go across the street. You have the opportunity to demonstrate it. You have the opportunity to come in this building and sit down with the, with the director of finance. You have the opportunity to sit down with the administrator or anyone on this board to review all of that information. You chose to come here and make some statements. I answered them. They you are have done. a document with falsified information in it. That is falsification of public records. That's official misconduct. In 2014, they took $1.1 million overcharge. They returned that $1.1 in 2015. In 2015, in the first and second quarter, they took a little over $582,696 from us. That money has never been refunded to us. It's in black and white. There is no doubt about it. Then somebody falsifies the 2018 uh, abstract of rainbow to try and look like they return the money. But what they did is they put, repeated the library part that was refunded in 2015. That was already refunded in 2015. Go ahead, let me know when you're finished. Well, you're just not right lying to us. Well, I'm not lying to anybody. I'm to, what I'm saying right here is it was um, the allegations concerning the tax overbilling in 2014, it wasn't here. Okay. Is well documented. Okay. Okay. Was reviewed by the state division of local government services. They were told, and resolved in the year 2015. Correct. Okay. Your 2015 preliminary taxes are based on half your 2014. So half of the overcharge that was made in 2014 was duplicated in 2015, quarters one and two. We paid $582,696 in extra taxes in the first and second quarter of 2015. That money has never been refunded. It, because it, it's a half a year. First of all, Mr. Gettler, okay, what, what, may I? Yeah. Okay, I stand absolutely by what his statement is. Everything that we do goes through the Division of Local Government Services. And we have an order. The order was here. So if you have questions, I would direct it to the Division of Local Government Services, or I would, in fact, that's where I would uh, direct it. Because there's nothing that we can do here that's going to satisfy you. We did it by, we did it correctly back in those days, when we found out about it in 2014, it was handled absolutely the way it was supposed to be handled. And it was taken care of the way it was supposed to be handled, and it was run through the Local Government Services. There, there are our oversight, that's the state oversight of the county government. The letter back then said they reviewed it, they didn't approve it, and the people... They had to approve it. They could not, we could not have made the changes if they did not approve it. The letter from Melissa Rockwell says that they reviewed it. Miss Melissa Rockwell is not government, uh, local government services. No, Melissa she says they reviewed it. That's correct, they reviewed it, that's correct, but she, uh, on her side, but she wasn't the one that had to make the changes, we did. Please, that's when you should direct your questions. If you really feel like there was something illegal done, you should go to the prosecutor's office. And you New should report it. Went there. He's worthless, just like government here is worthless. Thank you. Herb, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh. No, no, you can come up. Anyone else wish to address the board? Come on. <laughs> See, all it takes is that a little bit to George mm -hmm. Edwards, um, old time Sussex County resident, and live in Highland Lakes, Burnham, New Jersey. Are you going to make his way back? 
Sorry? You can make us feel better or make us feel scared. Well, I come here with a heavy heart because I'm sure most of you know uh, or have read in the last yes. Sunday's New Jersey paper about the gentleman from Hampton who passed. Um, he was reported to have Kowalski um, virus. Uh, he had been to Newton Hospital and they released him and 12 hours or so later he went back and uh, at that time um, he didn't make it out. So um, his daughter and his family and his friends, I feel very bad for them and my condolences, and I'm sure all of our condolences to them. And that brings me to why I'm here, is because after reading the paper, um, I read a part where he said he recalled, or the daughter related, saying he recalled getting bit by a tick, but didn't think anything about it because he didn't get a bullseye. And unfortunately, that's where the education part comes in, and that's what you know, I'm part of the volunteer with the Tick Squad is what we've been saying all along. A lot of people don't realize that you do not get a, a bullseye. The lucky ones get a bullseye. The unlucky ones do not. And he had a time frame of a few weeks. If he had known, maybe he could have got some additional help and maybe he could have survived. I don't know. I do understand that there is another younger gentleman that who lives in the immediate area who's also very sick uh, with Powassan. Um, they said he will probably survive, but with severe neurological damages. So it's, it's out there, it's scary, and um, I'm going to bring it up to the um, freeholders board again. I think we should be doing more in schools. I think we should be doing more in the health department. And um, I'm uncertain about how the figures are related as far as tick-borne diseases in Sussex County are done. Um, we've been trying to get more information on it. There is some reporting from 2017, uh, specific numbers. They say babiosis 98, lichiosis and anaplasmosis 115, Lyme 1,515, Powassan at that time is five, and spotted fe fever rickiosis is 35. Then there's other figures which, when we went to a presentation given by Newton Hospital and head of infectious diseases, um, he had mentioned the five of Powassan. There's another figure out there from January 1st through June 20th of 2018, but I haven't seen anything past that. And I would appreciate it if someone here on the board could contact our health department to get an update and to see where we are with this. And um, I would like to see something being done as far as the college is concerned, because the college is, has an agriculture department, they have a chemistry department, they have the up and coming youth of Sussex County, we hope they'll stay in the county, and I think they should be involved in it. And I think it would be a good thing for the county college to do maybe um, partner with us or whomever, um, do a tick drag, we do have a way to, we've been contacting different labs to find out if we can get reduced fees to get the ticks and analyzed, and we are able to do that. Um, everything we've done so far is basically in a volunteer and out of our pocket. Excuse me. Um, so I'm just saying, you know, I was, I was telling somebody this scenario. So the doctor comes up and says, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is, is, you're gonna live, you're gonna to have to take five or six different drugs for a year or so. Unfortunately, they're gonna cost you about $1,000 out of your pocket every month. And you say, shh, that's not in my budget. But what are you gonna do? You're gonna to choose to live and you're gonna say, well, somehow, someway, I'm gonna find that money and I'm gonna do what's right and I'm gonna protect myself and we're just saying, Let's, let's try to move forward as a county and, and do more um, for the residents. And basically, that's all I'm asking. And, and the one other thing is, I, we, we contacted the health department. I'm not sure how they get their figures, okay? Because one thing was mentioned about um, investigations versus cases. So if they have hard fact numbers here, they had to be cases, not investigations. So I would like some clarification if you don't mind in that also. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. I have um, a couple things. Uh, so as far as getting the numbers, that's easy enough between, you know, yes. and, and so there are the, are the uh, liaisons to the health department. Um, 
as far as two things. What is ludicrous to me is that we still have such little education out for adults. Now we know for children, the Department of Education has sent out, and I mentioned this at a prior meeting, uh, requesting school districts across the state by the end of this month to share any resources that they currently use. Because tick-borne illness is now <coughs> included in the health curriculum for all grades. So they're starting to build that. But I still cannot believe the narrative of, oh, there's no bullseye, that's okay. Or, oh, there's a tick on me, um, they're not gonna test, I'm gonna flush it down the toilet because they can't climb out that way. Or, you know, any kind of language like this, I don't understand why we have not caught up to say there are companies, saying the county is gonna analyze every tick or whatnot. There are companies that you pay $35, $45, they will get that tick back to you in 72 hours, tell you what that tick has. So for this gentleman who has, has lost his life, I know in what I'm reading now that Powassan is not necessarily um, you know, treatable by any drug at this point, Correct. but that type of palliative or preventive care, knowing if that tick came back, because April 15th is the alleged date that he was bit, and, and the middle Possibly. of May is when he went to Newton Hospital, unfortunately lost his life. Had he known within a 72 hour cycle that yes, this tick did have that, what steps could have been done, I don't know. Correct. I'm not a medical professional, but the knowledge of knowing that that's an option, right. or you may have a child that you're giving a 30-day doxy cycle to that's violently ill from it. It's making them sick, they're throwing up, and the tick comes back completely clean with nothing. You can stop it. Like the knowledge is power here, and that people are still looking for a bullseye or saying flush the tick down the toilet is just mind-blowing exactly. to me. Well, I was just um, bitten um, not too long ago, and I sent the tick away, and I'm waiting to hear from um, the, the lab. Um, the head of the lab and CEO did get in contact with me and say, I identified the tick, and it was a female, um, dog tick, but that doesn't mean just because his dog didn't, didn't have any, you know, pathogens in it. So I'm I'm waiting to hear. But good heavens, if the person who already has an infection gets bit by a tick that has Powassan, at least I'd go and make my my I'm not kidding around. I make my will and get my affairs in order or something. I mean, you know. I'm so what just, happened at the college when you met? Did you met with Dr. Yes, Palmer, we met with Dr. Dr. John Palmer. Where are you with? He's, he's on board. Um, unfortunately, it was towards the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. They were just wrapping it up, so it wasn't enough time. We had to get professionals. We would have, suppose, we'd have all professionals from different you know, fields, uh, labs and, and, and whatnot, MDs and uh, people who are line literate come, um, along with you know, um, students and whatnot from the college. But he's all on board. Unfortunately, there was not enough time to do it. So we're talking about September maybe getting that done in September, so. Well, I, I just want to say that, you know, we all know that we're in the hotbed here. I mean, this is probably one of the, the worst areas for this particular thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that the state has not done anything, I feel like we're, we're lagging behind, and, and I just can't understand it, but all I know is that we still are responsible for the residents of Sussex County, so I, I think there needs to be some serious discussions on, our end on how we support this and how we help it. Okay. Can, because can I, I know I? that can I step up and add please, some please sure. Yeah. Right, hold on, hold on. Uh, okay. we're, we're going to exceed, give everyone five minutes. Oh, now yeah. what happens, oh, I'll hold on. Yeah, well, just so I explain this, what happens is when I do that um, and we go over, I have to extend that to everybody. So Don't extend it to him, he's gonna come well, up and I'm not gonna do that because then I have to extend right. it to everybody. We either have a five minute policy or we don't. Right. No. So he's, he's a new person. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Now, the freeholders get an opportunity to talk back. To Thank you. you. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, I'm going to uh, ask that you give, um, I don't have her last name, but her name is Marty, the director of the nursing, M Marty. And she should be able to give you um, that information, uh, the current. Just give her a call. Well, Go ahead. I'd rather it come from the dais and from you folks, because I did try that with another part person from it's important. And I was shut down, so. Well, it, it's important, and I'd like to talk to you about that, but it's important that we understand how things work in the county. So it's easy, you know, we'll, we'll, either I'll make the call or Greg will make the call, but if you're a member of the public, uh, we, I need the feedback to know how the information is getting out. So I am gonna ask us if you would just do that, and then you can let me know if you were able to get your information. The, the second part is um, we've done, um, in the past, the county uh, health department has done things uh, 
press releases, and Bruce Scruton has written many articles either on Zika virus and ticks and, and many, many things. As a matter of fact, he's almost, an, I would almost say an expert on some of this stuff uh, over the years. <laughs> but <clears throat> the issue of the bullseye and all of that, it, it seems that that information comes out and for whatever reason, um, it just doesn't go. <coughs> that you, you have a, my son, when he came down year, 25, 30, 30 years ago, whatever, there was a rash all over his legs, and there was no bullseye, ma major problem with it. So it's one of those things that, for some reason, the people have this bullseye thing in their head. Mm -hmm. um, and the other, the other issue was many years ago, um, there was a, a conversation with Marty on putting a, a certain hospital that had specialized information or these labs on our website. And um, for legal reasons, we can't do that. Right, I understand. Yeah, and, and, uh, but I do think that if there are labs out there and you're able to uh, get that information out through brochures or things of that nature, there's no reason that those things, I, I don't, I think we, public health wise, uh, we, there's many things that we put out uh, throughout the county in our library. Well, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I'd rather not call the health department again because I did and I spoke to somebody and the conversation just went round and round and round. And when I was, when I realized I was getting nowhere, I said, you know what, I'm sorry. I think we just better end this conversation now because I felt disrespected. I'm paying, I'm a taxpayer, mm -hmm. I'm a resident, I'm paying a salary. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that was called for. It was very unprofessional and very uncalled for. And, you know, it makes me upset. As you can see, I get upset about it. I, I never attacked, I, I never went in a force, forceful way and attacked anybody. You know, as a matter of fact, I called somebody else and somebody else called me back and said, well, how can I help you? She's busy. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, uh, this is what I wanted to talk to her about. We had met her. You know, at the YMCA fair, everything was good. We were talking about maybe get collaborating a little bit and whatnot. And she said, well, you know, we do it this way and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, but, okay, so maybe you can get me the stats. And I was totally shut down and she double talked and double talked and double talked to, I think she realized she was making no sense. So I just said, okay, we're done. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. You want to talk? Come on. <laughs> yeah, just real quick. State your name, address. Thank you. Thank you. Josh Alvernando. Uh, to answer Josh's question, when we talked to uh, the president of the college, the main issue was he didn't know where to get the funds from. So we had discussed it. We said we could get it for around $6,000. And he said he would try talking to local business people or talking to people at the hospital. Funds for what exactly? To do the tech analysis. The cost roughly was $6,000. Normally it would cost about $35 a tick, she's going to do it for $22 a tick, okay. which Actually, is good. So and we're talking about doing 300 ticks, right. 100 to 300, depending upon where we do the tick drive. Um, regarding the statistics, when we looked at the statistics from 2017, and then um, trying to get the update on the statistics, what I would like to see, personally, is that those statistics are published monthly and put on your website in the public health area, if that could be done. Because that would be informative. It would tell people how many cases have been found because there seems to be a discrepancy on what we were told at Newton Hospital from Dr. Allegra versus what was published in the public health nursing. So other than getting that resolved, I really would like to see that information published, if it could be. Okay, thank okay. you. Right. What, can I ask that yeah. question again? So the tick drag, right, the analysis. Right. They're gonna provide the labor, $6,000 is due to the actual lab analysis, right? Yeah, the labor would be, what we wanted to do is we wanted the students to get the recognition on the college, right. Right. community service. Absolutely. Right? So they would, they would do the tick drag, and then we would work with them, tell them who the lab is, they would send it to the lab, and she knows there would be a contract, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and then they would do the analysis and they would provide it back. Then the school would take the analysis, and then we'd try and get some public relations out of it and put it in the newspaper. Could we also use that information to try and get some kind of grant funding 
Certainly. Possible help. Yeah. Certainly. Have a night. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wish to address the field? This is very personal stuff. This is personnel stuff. Mm -hmm. We cannot respond to it. And um, so I think this is an issue that may be a meeting or something, if you'd like to have a meeting on this. Because publicly, I mean, uh, it, 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 this is a. We just can't respond. We can't listen. We can't listen. But that's why no names listed in here. Okay. All right.
when, when this happened to us a second time and, and he had sort of an issue with the third party that was making the notification, <coughs> I questioned the policy. Um, in questioning that policy, I also followed up with someone from the union who informed me that without that written letter, there's absolutely nothing that they can do. Um, it seems that that's a deliberate move that's been being made, um, and I, I don't believe it's just my husband that has had that happen to him. Um, and, and frankly, I can't say any positive that's coming out of it, um, just to take the, the protections away which we have. Um, I'm sure that all of you know, and I'm sure that the other employees that are here, or, or may have been here right now, that's it. I'm, I'm keeping five minutes time. Five, five minutes time. Okay. What was that? That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have something in writing you wish to give to the board? Um, no. Okay. If I can just remind Ms. Sanchez, you can call me tomorrow regarding the date that your offer was due. I had emailed you and it has been forwarded to employee services. If you recall, you thought the yeah, your response was seven days. My acknowledgement was seven days, which I did confirm. Well, that's a loss in transit yes. for three days, which I'm not really sure why that was. Right, you said inter-office mail, I believe. I did. Yes, I have no control over inter-office mail. Oh, no, I understand that. I understand. Yeah, that. it was just missing for seven days. Does anyone else wish to address the field of work on topic? Okay, motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Real comments. George, you have any? No, I've guessed them. Sylvia? Sure. I wanted to talk about the Armed Forces Relief Fundraiser that's held in the pack on twice a year. Um, I attended, it's a wonderful event. And I want to thank the committee <coughs> that is faithful to hold these fundraisers and the, the event raises money for the men and women returning from active duty that need assistance. Sometimes it's medical, sometimes they may need a washing machine or an appliance and that money comes into um, this event and it's given right, right directly to them. So it's, it's a great fundraiser for the armed forces. Uh, the second forum that I went to uh, was the 2019 Economic Outlook Forum at Sussex County Community College and that forum was the second program that was presented by the firm Maddie Clark and Ryan. Uh, the guest speaker was Kevin DePew. He's a deputy chief mm. economist of RMS US, followed by a panel discussion. Kevin gave his economic forecasts and touched on numerous issues that were very relevant to Sussex County. And I'm only going to talk on one of them because this issue was raised continuously. When we talk about economic development, trying to get millennials here or bringing startup companies or young entrepreneurs into our area, and it's connectivity and the demand for high-speed internet service. And interesting enough, as we were talking about this, I received the county newspaper, I don't know if anyone received it, but right on the front page, it's broadband data disparities take center stage in the 160th <coughs> Congress. I just want to read a short paragraph. It says, as demand for access to affordable high-speed internet grows, economic opportunities for the unconnected continue to slip away. Counties lacking access to even basic broadband infrastructure are at a competitive disadvantage, exasperating the economic divide between rural and urban areas. It's a great article and goes on to talk about this issue. And, and when it comes to Sussex County, it's a problem. And um, he talked about the economic forecast in, in relation to uh, trade and tariffs and all the other things that we're dealing with right now in the country, but he spoke about millennials and they're always an interesting group because they're getting older and they're changing some of their ways. And he said, it's not that they don't want to come here and buy a home and be a homeowner and raise a family. It's that this connectivity isn't here and they need it for their work, especially if they have able to work at home. He said, they do want to come here. They do want, you know, they're having families. They want to get out of the city and um, they're just not able to come. And this is the biggest reason that keeps them from coming is the competitiveness mm -hmm. with that broadband. Um, so it was really interesting. It was an excellent, excellent forum. And with the panel that was there, it was two business owners from Sussex County and of course Jackie from JCPNL. And they were all talking about broadband as, as, as top number priority, plus all the other things that JCPNL and their companies are experiencing. So it was, it was an excellent program. And I just want to thank Tom Ryan uh, for putting that on and bringing it all together. It was very well attended. That's all. Go on. Um, this week I attended the uh, Ogdensburg meeting. That's one of my towns that I'm a liaison to. Um, 
They swore a new councilman, Nelson Alvarez, who was appointed um, they, upon David Astor's resignation. Um, they did want to invite us to an event on September 7th. It is their uh, celebration of Auckland's birthday. So I asked them to again forward to, uh, to Terry. But they did have a question. Um, if you've been reading in the paper on, on 517, which is County Road, uh, there have been multiple accidents over the past uh, few months with serious injuries, um, trucks rolling over guardrails. Um, I mean, very, very, very severe accidents due to the curvature and the speed. Um, they asked, is there a possibility or where do they go to inquire how they would double the fines, put up a sign that says fines are doubled in this corridor. Now, Oppensburg is legendary for their step down of their speed limits, <laughs> for their police presence there, and that still is not an effective deterrent to what's happening from people misnavigating that road. So they're reaching out to the county to see what is the limit for them to see how we would designate that, you know, fines doubled in this area, safe zone, flashing lights, you know, bells and whistles to get people to slow down because there really have been severe accidents there as of late. Their so. request should be directed to the county engineer. Okay. And you'll do that, Greg? Uh, or that? I mean, if Dawn has a contact, mm -hmm. I, I, I certainly yeah, I'll pass I can, all that. I can I have Bill sure. reach out. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Um, talk about the Sussex County Arts and Heritage Council. They had a few events they wanted me to announce. They have a paint and sip Friday, June 28th. They're uh, the beneficiary of the Food Truck Festival fundraiser on Saturday, July 20th at the fairgrounds. It's $100 for adults, kids and trip free. And that's a fundraiser for the Arts and Heritage Festival. Uh, um, that is July 20th, Saturday, July 20th. Paint and sip is Friday, June 28th. So paint and sip is this month. And that's at their storefront. Correct. That's at the storefront. The food truck uh, festival fundraiser is at the fairgrounds on July 20th. Um, yoga is art, so I guess I don't know how that connects, but it sounds fun. So yoga is art every Thursday, 6.30 to 7.45. It's $15. That's also at their storefront. And they have one other um, juried arts program uh, called Pushing the Envelope. It runs from the 29th of June to July 27th. They're accepting artwork that you could submit and will be able to stay. And I ask that you visit uh, their Facebook page that has much more information about it, but those were just some events. And they sent me flyers that I'll distribute to you, but they were uh, just wanted me to verbally announce. Um, Herb and I attended our quarterly meeting of uh, ourselves and the president of the college and the president of the College Board of Trustees. Um, we discussed uh, much of what Sylvia just discussed about the lack of um, connectivity, uh, how 5G up in the county could drastically change the employment opportunities, um, especially in the medical field. Um, so that was actually a very good meeting. And Dr. Connolly had sent me uh, the Sussex County Community College report to the freeholders, which I shared with all of you because our last meeting was dedicated to uh, the issue regarding uh, the Sheriff's Office and the Immigrant Trust Directive, so we skipped a lot of our general comments. Um, you know, just a couple highlights of this. Um, one thing to point out that we had discussed at the meeting, uh, part of the college's partnership with Vernon Township School District, uh, the Board of Trustees purchased 20 computers and monitors, the ITB lab that goes from Vernon uh, for students who can currently um, attend Vernon High School and, and the college. Um, that purchase is funded by the HEFT grant, which stands for the Higher Education Facilities Trust Fund, um, and it provides grants for construction, reconstruction, development, extension, um, tech, laboratory, research facilities, and uh, things of that nature. But the last thing I want to say is that uh, this month the board approved a new certificate in culinary arts and an optics technology option under the AAS Technical Studies. Optics Technology Option is in partnership with Thor Labs, and we're actually gonna be one of 10 programs in the country that's supported by the federal government, uh, and the program actually focuses on technology that can contribute to national security. So we're one of 10 in the nation, so. Very cool. Very Same. impressive. And that's what I have, thank you. Very good. Um, Josh? Sure. Um, first, I just wanna reiterate the fact that I think that we really should talk about how we're going to support the issue of ticks 
in the county, you know, especially as a parent of small children. I literally have paranoia at all times when they're outside of this. And I feel with, you know, the lack of our state stepping up to try and find resolutions to this because the urban areas don't, don't share this problem, you know, as usual, we're on our own when it comes to stuff that the rest of the state doesn't have to worry about. I think we need to talk about how we support this. And if that, I don't know what that looks like. If that's a, you know, a, 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 some kind of committee made up of the public that, that decide they want to chip in and help out and we, we support it how we can, I, I, I don't know, but I, we need to talk about it and we need to be involved. So, and I know Don has brought that up before. I, I just think it's important and, and you know, if this isn't, you know, if people in our county dying isn't a catalyst for us to do that, then what is? So, um, my other comments, I was reserving my time to talk about the financial policies that you had asked us to work on, um, but today we actually made some edits, so it's not prepared to, to go public, so I don't really wanna go over it because I just gave you guys the final draft, so without you guys being able to review it, um, I would just you know publicly say that it's very close to being finished. I think we have a finished product, um, but you know without you guys being able to view it and give give some comments back, um, I would I would hope that maybe by next meeting we can actually um, put it out there. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay, I just have a couple of comments. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. I did. Your, your time is up. <laughs> <laughs> you get the hook on me. Um, I, I was I was. I'm contacted by Adele Stars um, from Warren County. She's one of the mayors. And they've had a big push to try and stop a project that's going on in Warren County, Route 80. It's a rock wall that's going up. Um, they're calling it the Rock Well Project, Route 80 Rock Well Project. You know of it? So, is that the 35 yeah. million or billion? 65 million. 65. 65 million. I'm sorry. And nobody can explain why they're doing that. Is that the project? Well, no, no. The, the reasoning is there was, uh, I'm, I'm okay. trying to remember the conversation, but it was, I think she said nine rocks fell in a 10 year period, but one of them caused fatality. So that has spawned this big thing. Um, but I guess they're really making a push to stop the project because, you know, at least look at other options. There's netting, there's other things that other places have done, and a $65 million rock wall just seems like. You know, and I don't know the details, so I don't want to speak about it, but what they asked is if they could come and give us a presentation to inform us about it. So I will, uh, we'll talk about it and then you can tell me, you know, what, what would be a good meeting for them to come and do that. Okay. I think um, probably uh, July, because that would be here. And, and uh, the, we have one in Montague, but we probably get a lot of people here. Okay. So, as, so we'll, we'll, we'll coordinate and, and if we figure it out. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Um, um, my comments, I have a couple comments. Um, the, I want to talk a little bit about the Botech School. Um, just wanted to say that um, there's been an increase in, I believe, the number of students, correct? So they're turning people away, in my understanding. Yeah, well, and there's also been an increase in the hours, and the culinary school, or the culinary programs are filled up. So if you think of thinking of taking a class, they, they were all filled Oh, wait, you, no, you're not talking about the technical school, you're talking about the college. Oh, they say technical, I'm you talking about the college. About the college. The so. adult culinary was filled, yes. Yeah, that was filled. Um, there's a big, uh, big push for that, so that's a, I think that's so good. I can't send my wife there? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Keep, mm -hmm. keep, keep cooking. Keep learning. <laughs> keep learning. Keep learning. <laughs> and uh, I think the college hours were up as well as the number of students attending. So great. that's a great trend mm -hmm. and that's a great look. So. The doom and gloom that we've been told about, I, I'm hoping is uh, going to not be there. Um, there is a bridge opening, um, and correct me if I'm incorrect, uh, this Friday, is that still on? Uh, that's correct, the, uh, the bridge opening is uh, scheduled for 10 o'clock. It is the reopening and ribbon cutting of uh, bridge X9. Uh, which it carries County Route 565. Uh, it's Compton Road in Wantage. And uh, Josh and I attended the Senior Club President's meeting, uh, which had to do with transportation. Um, that was the Transportation Trust, I believe, right? Or, or oh, it was, our, it was the Senior Services, senior uh, services. Public Hearing. And public we went hearing. over all of the programs right. and services that we fund for Older Americans Act funds. So we, we 
did that. And very comprehensive meeting. It was very good. And uh, I, I did attend a uh, veterans uh, scholarship uh, uh, meeting in, at night, and that was very good. I let you know. So that's all I have. Shall we move on? I will, oh, no, I can't make that. I'm actually, will not be at that meeting. The breach, the breach on Friday. And that one I can, I was really looking forward to it, but they moved it. They moved the breach. <laughs> <laughs> they moved the, uh, the opening. opening. <laughs> they moved the opening to Friday. Breach on the directors. So uh, I, I was disappointed, but you know, mm -hmm. those things happen. Mm -hmm. Originally it was a, a Monday and then it was a Friday. Um, okay, approval of consent agenda. So moved. The Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Sussex has reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions and determined that adoption of said resolutions is in and will further the public interest. If any freeholder would like to remove an item to be considered separately, please do so now. Okay, motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Roll call. Second. 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 Freeholder Fantasia? Yes. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Hertzberg? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Yardley? Yes. I have a question on the approval of the minutes. And uh, if there's no objective, can we do them all at one time? Or well, do they have to be done individually. There were some that individuals were in in one part of the meeting and not in the other part of the meeting, and that's why I did it that way. That was my next question. So if we were at the special meeting on June 3rd, but about 20 minutes prior to it concluding, we cannot vote on those minutes. Yes. Okay. So let's regular meeting. Don't vote on 20 minutes worth. Kevin, when you're serious all the time, I make a joke. Yeah, nobody gets it. Maybe I'll make more Okay, regular meeting, May 29th, 2019. We hold the first place. I'm going to abstain because okay. I should have oh, planned yeah. this. Yeah. Do I have a motion to uh, accept? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, executive session, May 29th, 2019. Do you have a motion to accept? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Special meeting, open session, June 3rd, 2019. Do you have a motion to, to uh, accept? Motion. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Uh, yes. And I abstain. Okay, you have two abstentions. You're okay. for that. And special meeting June 3rd, 2019, executive session. Do okay. have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I need to. Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. Um, appointments and or resolutions. <coughs> uh, resolution, a motion to adopt resolutions A to C. So Second. Okay, voice all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, awards of contracts, change of and, and bids. The Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Sussex has renewed the award of contract change orders bids consisting of various proposed resolutions and determined that adoption of the said resolutions is in and will further the public interest. If any freeholder would like to remove an item to be considered separately, please do so now. Okay. Motion to adopt contracts uh, A and B. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Roll call. I'm sorry, roll call. Freeholder Fantasia? Yes. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Hertzberg? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Yard? Yes. Motion to approve um, bill is A. We have the motion. 20, uh, June 12, 2019. Second. Second. Roll call. Freeholder Fantasia? Yes. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Hertzberg? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Yard? Yes. Motion to adopt um, resolution uh, B, amending the 2019 capital budget. Roll call vote. Do I have a motion? I'm sorry. Move move. So moved. Second. Yeah. Roll call. Freeholder Fantasia? Yes. Freeholder Graham? Yes. Freeholder Hertzberg? Yes. Freeholder Patillo? Yes. Freeholder Director Yardley? Introduction of First Reading Capital Ordinance 2019-010. Do I 
for improvements to the Sussex County Signals SC-36 at the intersection of Conway Road 607, River Six Road, Crescent Road, and Lakeside Boulevard in the borough for PAC on improvements to various county roads and bridges in and for the County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, and appropriating $5,778,950.19 in funding from the New Jersey Department of Transportation, including $250,000 from the fiscal year 19 Local Aid Infrastructure Program, $500,057,931 from the fiscal year 19 Annual Transportation Program, ATP, County Aid, and $471,019.19 from the fiscal year 15 Annual Transportation Program, ATP, County aid to pay for the cost thereof. You need to take a breath. Okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thanks for awesome. <laughs> Motion to introduce this ordinance in first reading. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Freeholder Fantasia. Yes. Freeholder Graham. Yes. Freeholder Hertzberg. Yes. Freeholder Tatillo. Yes. Freeholder Director Yard. Yes. Motion to authorize the clerk to advertise mm -hmm. this ordinance as introduced to first reading and also post the same on the bulletin board in the lobby of the county administrative center, together with notice of public hearing stating that a hearing will be held on June 26, 2019 at 7 p.m. prior to final adoption of this ordinance. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Personnel, um, resolution authorizing personnel agenda of June 12, 2019. A motion. Second. Roll call. Freeholder Fantasia. Yes. Freeholder Graham. Yes. Freeholder Hertzberg. Yes. Freeholder Patillo. Yes. Freeholder Director Yorkin. Yes. Uh, administrative report. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Director. Um, as had already been mentioned, uh, I too had attended the economic forum, and uh, I, I thank Freeholder Patillo for mentioning the issue that the National Associate, Association of Counties has brought up. And I just want to share uh, another piece of that because in partnership with the National Association of Development Organizations and the farm, uh, uh, and farm Credit, uh, the National Association of Counties has released uh, an app called Test IT. Um, you can find it in the App Store, um, Google Play, and this mobile app is designed to identify areas where there is little or no connectivity. And that information is then being compiled uh, and will be used in advising, you know, on behalf of the National Association of Counties, advise the federal government as to where deficiencies exist throughout the United States. Um, and so I would just suggest, you know, if you have interest, uh, you can share it. I've actually installed the app and tested it at home. I'm happy to say that mine passed. Um, but I would imagine that there are plenty of places in this county uh, where if you run that app, it will not pass. Um, and then it transmits the information uh, back to the researchers that are gathering this data. Uh, also, too, I had uh, shared uh, back with uh, Tom Ryan that information. But also, too, an important thing which the Freeholder Board uh, certainly is aware of. But it's, it's an important piece that was discussed at the Economic Forum. And that is what the investments are uh, in Sussex County. And it's important to recognize that, in fact, the county's capital investment in transportation infrastructure is extremely significant. Uh, for uh, the uh, fiscal year 2019, uh, the county is making uh, an investment of more than $23 million in support of our transportation infra infrastructure which in turn fosters economic development throughout the county. And so it wasn't something that we were able to really raise at the forum, but I think it's important to recognize the very valuable uh, investment that the county makes uh, as part of uh, helping economic development throughout the county. Uh, the director had mentioned the uh, ribbon cutting. Uh, and again, I just uh, invite everyone to attend this Friday, June 14th at 10 a.m. on County Road 565 Compton Road in Wanage Township. Uh, we will be having the reopening and the ceremonial ribbon cutting. Uh, and lastly, uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, today, uh, the county, uh, through the Division of Employee Services, held its first vendor and wellness fair. Uh, we had over 60 employees uh, participate. 
Uh, we had 30 employees complete biometric screening that was provided through uh, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield at no cost to the employees. We had more than 14 vendors uh, participate and positive feedback was received from both employees uh, as well as vendors alike. So congratulations to the uh, Office of Employee Services and uh, another successful event. That concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Uh, County Council? Yes, yes I would, uh, I would thank just, you for coming. Yes, okay. <laughs> I, I, I would just like to mention the uh, passing of a uh, Longtime uh, former county council Bill Fitzgibbons. Uh, Bill was also a Frank, I mean a Franklin. Bill was also a, a former first assistant county prosecutor and was also uh, head counsel to the SCMUA, all at different times. Um, I would also mention that Bill uh, graduated from the first uh, graduating class in Polk County High School, which I think was 1960 four or five and he scored the first touchdown in the school's football history wow. um, and that request was from, from his family uh, his funeral is tomorrow he was 72. thank you thank you and unfinished business uh, new business uh, or something i don't know whether this falls under new business unfinished business or business in progress but I just want to point out, you know, just to clarify, I've been coming back with reports from going to, you know, different council meetings, and I think tonight's exchange explains why it's important. Uh, going to Oppensburg, having the council members sit, and it's very casual, it's really nice, it's almost like a round table, like, because it is a smaller community, but to have them say, hey, this is a real problem, what do you think, you know, who do we contact? Engineering, DPW, do we call the sheriff's office? Is it public safety? These are not professionals and they don't want to go to a manual and open it up because that's not personal. It comes out of an authentic or organic conversation and it comes back and the nice thing is to be able to come back, obviously if it was something incredibly emergent in that moment, you know, I would give them a phone and call Greg and say, Greg, direct me, so on and so forth. But for something like this that they're looking for a hand for, it puts a face to everything. They all took my cell phone number you know, I, I can give that information. You know, Greg could reach out. I could, I could bring people together. And I think, for me thus far, you know, going to two, two of the, you know, five so far, it's been positive. So I just wanted to share that. That I think the element, again, it's meeting the target of the element of what we were looking for, is putting a face on something and not having our interactions be antiseptic. That's all. Um, public session from the floor. Everyone's asked to keep their comments in five minutes. Please state your name, your name, and municipality on the sign. Do you motion to open the floor for public comment? Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, open to the floor. Anyone wishing to address the real? Come on back. Good morning, members. Um, real quick, um, Sylvia, you mentioned about um, services in the county. Now, I know for a fact that they're in West Milford, they have two choices for cable company. Um, and West Milford is a stone, stone's throw away from where I live. So, I don't know if we could approach different carriers and say, what can you do for us up here? Maybe some kind of incentive or... So, I, or I can tell you, because I, before I left Sparta, I went through this process. And it's very difficult to attract people up here because of the sparsity. It costs them a lot of money to run the lines and they don't feel like they can make their investment back. Um, there are new companies coming in. The, Sparta just did a deal with a very, very large cable company that is going to start working in our area. They're going to do a couple towns as a test run. Um, but as, as they were saying before, uh, the wireless 5G could change it all where you don't need to run wires anymore and you could see a, a completely different um, kind of technology that's going to make everybody give everybody the speed that needs to be there. So it, it's it's not just as easy as calling and saying, "Hey, who wants to come?" Because we no, did I that. And that. Everybody I mean, was like, uh, "A little no. costly, but maybe some incentive." You know, sometimes you got to give and take. Um, regulated and by the cable industry, regulated by the state. So FCC, right? No, well, no. no. What's the acronym? It's the BPU. 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 BPU.
you know, they, they get a franchise and they have to come to the town. Right, I've seen that burn. And they have to come and submit and every right. year we have to prove them. But you, you never say anybody else coming in except uh, service electric. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, that's part of the camp. We have Optum. You have Optum, okay. And Roxbury's got Fios, but they won't come any further. But it's, Optimum is, it's, 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 it's a, a problem. board too, because Optimum is up as, in Saniston. Yeah. But it's down in Stanton. But they're, they're the less sparse areas where you don't have that density of uh, people. Of course, to bring them in, and, and the yeah. time it takes to get the permits out of the state is also another problem. And the other thing in regards to accidents on different uh, major roads and, and uh, state roads, I was on the um, Scenic Byway Committee. Um, Vernon, uh, 515 coming through, Arniston down, 515 looping over. And I was surprised what, um, there was a representative, of course, from the Department of Transportation who was working with us, and they had stats galore on accidents, what type of accidents, why, and whatnot. So maybe if you want to reach out to them and get some input from them, maybe what we could do. Uh, just thought I'd mention it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Seeing none, I'm going to close to, a pub, to the public. The motion is closed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So just to remind everyone, look to the website. We have a lot of information on there. And uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.